Hey everybody, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Derek Parker. I'm the senior pastor of Purpose City Church right here in the great city of Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome to the Purpose Experience. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you so much for tuning in to our live worship today. Whether you're watching on Facebook Live, YouTube, Instagram, or wherever you're watching us from, we want to welcome you to our worship experience on today. I'm telling you, God is up to something so great. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to please share, tag somebody, invite somebody to watch this live worship experience, and we're going to worship God together today. Amen. We're getting ready to go into a powerful worship experience. Purpose Worship is getting ready to come forth and we're ministered through worship. And my great friend, who is also our musician, uh, Prophet Floyd Patterson, he's going to bring forth a powerful word of God on today. I want you to tune in, invite somebody to worship with you via live streaming. Live, I'm telling you, God is going to get glory today. And again, we want to just thank you for tuning in and we pray that today's worship experience will bless your life. Thank you, and let's worship God in spirit and in truth. that you would look on every heart, every family that is gathered here on today, those that are connected with us who are gathered here on today. And Lord, we say in the name of Jesus, not only have your way in us, but let the power of the anointing that rests on us, God, go home with us. Let it sit down and sup with us. Let it minister to the needs of our families, our friends, God. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus to carry the kind of influence where somebody will want to hear our testimony. Somebody will want to know that we were in your presence. Someone, oh God, will be excited because they heard a word that ministered to their soul, to their very being on today. And God, we thank you right now for your Holy Ghost fire dwelling in this place for administering to the very depths of our souls. I am a most we thank you for yokes being broken. Ha! Huh? Glory to God. But most of all, we thank you for your anointing on today that helps us to minister life, health, and strength to somebody else. Lord, even as we sing songs of Zion, God, as the word comes forth on today, let it minister to every need. And Lord, we thank you even for those that are streaming with us on today, for them being able to gather around their telephones, their laptops, their computers, their TVs, to see and to hear what thus saith the Lord. We pray right now, God, that the very experience that we have here, that it is transmitted through the airways, and that it touches them in their several homes, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that it reaches down to the inside of them, into the deep places, oh God, and that it brings forth change as we, oh God, go forth to minister in your name for your sake, for your glory, oh God, that your people might be edified, that the works of the enemy might be nullified, and that you, the very God of heaven, will be glorified. In Jesus' name, shout hallelujah! 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 Amen. Hallelujah. We love to call on the name of Jesus. Can we just put our hands together? Hallelujah. Here we go.
power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Yeah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Can we lift it up and say, there's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. So much power in your name. Power in your name. Can we say it right there? Say there's power. power in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. So much power in your power name. In your name. Yeah, there's power. power oh. So much power in your name. Power in your name. Hey, say things change. Things change when I call.
call on the name of the Lord? He is a strong tower. The righteous can run in and they're safe. So God, we lift to you our worship. Hallelujah. Because you, Lord, you are worthy and no one can worship you for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I will always I will always worship you Jesus yes Lord and as long as I have One more time, can I hear you guys sing it with me? I will and I will not be silent. I will always.
as long as I am breathing, I am free. I will always, I will always worship you, worship you. So real good, just lift it up, say, here's my worship. Whatever you're trying to hide from God, it's just give it to him. Here it is, God. Here are my frustrations too, oh, Jesus. Here is the weight I tried to carry on my own, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands and let's just give God the worship that he deserves. Lord, we thank you. God, we give you praise in this place. Lord, we offer worship to you, God. Lord, we want you to receive our worship. God, this ain't about us, but it's about you, God. In Jesus, we give you praise. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Without the music. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I will not be silent. I 
Just give God a worship. I know, I know we know how to praise God. We most churches we, we know how to praise. But sometimes God just wants just pure worship. If we can just all open our mouths and let's just give God the fruit of our lips. God, we thank you. God, we love you. Ah, God. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Lord, it's nobody but you, God. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Jesus. God, you've made ways out of no way, God. You've done so much for us, God. God, we can't even begin to start counting, God. We, can't, we, don't, we don't even know where to start, God. God, we just want to say thank you for every blessing. Thank you for for every way you made. Thank you, God, for every door that you've opened. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You're so good. You're so kind. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Yes, God. Yes, God. I love you, Jesus. Everybody love the
look at somebody and tell them it's kingdom investment time. It's kingdom investment time. It's time to invest into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful for everyone that came out today. And we like to say welcome to Purpose City Church. Amen. 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 Thank God for um, Pastor Bishop Brandon Lee. Can we give God praise? This is my friend. Amen. My friend and first lady, prophetess Lee. Can we praise God for her? <laughs> God bless you. Amen. And I'm going to um, also honor my soon-to-be wife, Lady. Can you stand to your feet? Everybody, let's praise God for her. Amen. 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 We thank God for what God is doing in the place. Amen. He is, he is a gummy. No, he is a good, good God. Amen. Amen. If you need offering envelopes, uh, please raise your hands at this time, and uh, we have somebody that will give you an offering envelope. Um, if you're writing checks, we ask you to please write to Purpose City Church. If you're writing checks, please write them payable to Purpose City Church. Um, if you want to give online, um, if you, um, there's two ways you can give online. Um, you can go to mypcchurch.org. God bless you. I pray that you have enjoyed our worship service thus far. Amen. It's, there's more to come, but we just pray that God is blessing your heart. While we're taking this pause right now, while they're taking the offering right now, um, I, I just want to let you know the great things that's coming up at Purpose City Church. Um, our eCampus is going, we're going to be launching our Purpose Search, the Purpose City Church eCampus. We're going to be launching that on Sunday, September the 20th at, at our regular worship time. I'm telling you, if you don't have a church home and you would love to be a part of Purpose City Church via our eCampus, we want to welcome you. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. He's advancing the kingdom of God in the earth, and we are part of what God is doing in this season. You don't have, you know, a lot of times I know a lot of people, they're not um, comfortable going into a worship um, building right now with COVID and different things that's going on right now. But we want to give you an opportunity to be a part of a movement. We're not just another church, but we are a movement. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. We're not, even though our, our base is in Baltimore, but, but God is just opening this door for us to do this thing globally. So we, if you need a home church and you're saying, you know what, I've been watching Purpose City Church, or I, you know, I feel what's, what I've been seeing on the live, and I, and I just want to be a part of something that God is in. I'm here to tell you, Purpose City Church is the place for you. And you can grow even being a part of an e-campus. Because God is going to do great things worldwide. And I'm just inviting you, um, for within the next week, it'll there will be a link on our website at mypcchurch.org. There will be a link on it where you can go on there and fill out the application and you and we can register you register you for our foundations class and we're going to make this thing happen because we're going to take this gospel throughout all the world amen and we're going to do the great commission that christ has commissioned us to do in the earth and i'm begging you to let's 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 join forces in the name of the lord and let's do this thing and make God happy. And the last thing, um, if you want to sow into Purpose City Church, you can also go to mypcchurch.org slash giving. You can click on to the um, link um, and, and also you can um, text your um, to give, text to give at 410 and the information will be right there for you. So we just want you to, let's just, let's help build the kingdom of God together. Now, let's go back into today's worship service, which is in progress. And I'm telling you, God is up to something great. God bless you.
Abundance follows me. All my bills are paid. That should have been a scream in the building. Hey, glory, all my bills are paid. Woo, all my debts are canceled. My God, I felt that. All my debts are canceled. All my needs are met. Father, with this seed, I break the spirit of poverty. I position myself for overflow. Ha! Ah, glory. Doors of failure are closed. Doors of deceleration are closed. And doors of not enough are closed. Doors of abundance are now open. Doors of more than enough are now open. Doors of acceleration are now open. And I will never be broke another day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together because you will never be broke another day in your life. Amen, amen. The musicians are going to give us some good offering music at the time. Y'all can, um, y'all can come on up and um, starting from the, starting from the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and tell them my broke days are over. I want you to say it like you really mean it. Look at somebody and tell them my broke days in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and get shout, shout, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Musicians are going to give us some good offering music. Hundredfold blessings upon every giver in Jesus' name. We thank you right now. Amen. Can we give God praise? Amen. Amen. 
well today. Look at somebody tell them it's preaching time at purpose. Amen. My friend, my brother, I was going to say apostle, well, I'm, I'm just speaking in the future. <laughs> um, Prophet Floyd Patterson, we've been friends for a long time, and I mean, and he has a great anointing on his life, um, not just musically, but even prophetically and even in the word ministry. And I'm just grateful to call this man not just my friend, but he's my brother. Amen. And I'm grateful um, for the anointing that's on his life. I'm telling you, we don't even, we've, we've only seen a small fraction of what God is going to do through this guy. Amen. But I'm telling you, his season is coming really, really quickly. And I'm telling you, what's, what we're getting ready to see, even on tonight, is this just going to be a preview of what God is going to do through him. Amen. Amen. Without any fur further preliminary, we want to yield the floor for God to do what he's going to do through this man of God. But before he comes, we're going to have a sermonic selection coming from Sister Ashley. She's going to come now. Amen. Those that, and if you've never heard her minister, you went for, you went for a treat today. Amen. Amen. She just, she's just not a singer, but she's a, a, a psalmist, a prophetic psalmist. And, and she's coming forth at this time. You, you can come on up, uh, Sister Ashley. You, you want to come up? Let's give God praise for, for her as she comes forth. And the next, and soon as she finished ministering, I'm going to ask everybody to stand on their feet and receive the man of God as he comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. That is a command, not a how you Hallelujah. doing. See you later. That is a command. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
you praise? Come on, what does praise sound like? Come on, what does praise sound like? We offer praise. We offer thanksgiving. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you for your goodness. And we worship you. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit, deal to Holy Spirit, deal. I give you authority until all that's in my life becomes yours. Yours until all that's in my life becomes yours. Lift it up, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Deal with me, Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit, deal throughout the night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you authority. Until all that's in my life becomes yours, yours. Until all that's in my life becomes yours. Thank you for that. Let us pray. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we give you glory, honor, and God, we arrest minds by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. God, we opened up hearts. We gut them out by the power and the authority of the Spirit to receive what you have for God. Cause the word to cause a reflection in lives, God. Cause it to change and shift lives, oh God. God, throw your weight around here, your Holy Ghost. Have your weight in this place. We bind the atmosphere of the north, south, east, and west, oh God. God, give you a separate clarity of thought, oh God. Anoint these lips of clay, and I shall be anointed to the prayer and preach your gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Uh, so the word of the Lord today comes from us, from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, 12 through 13. When you haven't said amen. 
So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one so. Samuel then took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. If I was to preach a text this evening from the topic, from the lobby to the sea. Turn to your neighbor and say, from the lobby to the sea. Now, we understand that before we dive into the text, that we must look back at the previous text before that. So we, let's go back to, to Samuel, the 15th chapter. So I was reading and I said, okay, God, what transpired before this text? So at this time, uh, King Samuel was the king at the moment. And Samuel decided to uh, anoint Saul to be king. And at this time, we look and we see he gave a commandment to Saul. And the commandment was to go out and to kill the Amalekites. That was his one order. That was his one directive. So he went to the Amalekites. And in the process, they were Kenites in the valley. And he said unto the Kenites, mm -mm, slide out the way. I'm paraphrasing. Slide out the way. We don't want you in the midst of it. So in this, they went into and they began to slaughter the Amalekites. Now watch this, watch this. So as we look at this, the Lord came unto Samuel and he said unto Samuel, there was a directive that I've given to your servant. There was a directive that I've given to Saul to slaughter all the Amalekites. And he refused to kill all the Amalekites. So as a result, what happened was that uh, Samuel said that God is grieved. He is vexed. He has rejected you as king. And we look at that and we see that there was such a rejection from the presence of God. And you go down further, the text, it says, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So at that point, Samuel, he grieved. He cried before the Lord. He rolled on his face. He was so sorrowful. But in the midst of the situation, the voice of the Lord came unto Samuel. And he said unto Samuel, how long shall you mourn? How long shall you cry? How long shall you cry out because I rejected King Saul? How many times in our lives where God has rejected something, we beg and we pleaded with God. God, don't take this. God, don't remove that. How many times have we pleaded to God? We try to reason with God. We try to bribe God with a little praise and worship. We try to bribe God with a little hands and wave and a few tongues. But it caused God to reject him. Don't be at a place in your life that your disobedience causes God to reject you. It's a dangerous thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. And we come to pick it up over at the 16th chapter. So after he had his little pity party, God said, there's another that has my heart. There's another that I have anointed for king. So therefore, he sent Samuel to the house of Jesse. In the house of Jesse, he told Jesse to bring forth his sons. Watch this. There were seven sons. Seven sons lined up. And Samuel walks down. God said, uh-uh, that's not it. Goes to the next one. Uh-uh, that's not it. So by this time, Samuel had gone all the way down to the last one. And God said, that's not it. Now watch this. So he asked Jesse, he said, is there any more sons that you have? <laughs> he said, there's one more. And he said, he's out in the field, tending the sheep. He's a shepherd. So they sent forth David. And as David entered stage left, as he entered into the premises, God said, that's the one. That's the one. 
right there, and that's when the scripture comes up plays where man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. Because they looked at David, they looked at the brothers, and saw they had the countenance, they had the physique, they had the look. We all know sometimes that some people, they, they don't have the look that God, um, they, they don't have the look that man is looking for, but God, he looks at the heart piece. So, so can I suggest to you that in that moment, that David was in his Kairos moment. He was in his Kairos moment. Think about it. He had to go down a list and in the appropriate time, in walks David. Now imagine David in the place, walking in not at the right time. He would have been under a Kronos moment. According to man time, according to analog, and according to the clock system. But the interesting piece to all of this is, many of the times in our lives, God has us in a hiding place. He has us in what I like to call the lobby. How many times have we sat in a place and wonder where God is? God, I gave my good offering. God, I've given you a good dance. God, I've given you a good praise. I rolled in the tongues. I speak in the tongues. I rolled on the floor. I've clapped my hands. I've come to Bible study. I've come to prayer meeting. I served on the organ. I served on the drums. I prophesied in your name. And you're like, God, I'm still here. Can I suggest to you that you, my brothers and sisters, are in the lobby? Turn your neighbor and say, don't despise the lobby. When you look at the word lobby, a lobby is a room providing space out of which one or more rooms or corridors lead, typically one to the near entrance of the public building. Here are similarities of what a lobby can be. An entrance hall, a hallway, a vestibule, a foyer, a waiting room, an ante room, a porch, a corridor, a passageway. In a passage. So coming up, we're in my 70s and 80s babies. I recall going to the movie theater. And in the movie theater, they had pictures of movies that are in and movies that are soon to come. So in the lobby, you get a feature presentation of what's coming. Now as time has gone on, the world has evolved, so now you look at the pictures in the lobby, you have digital movies actually playing of what's coming. Can I suggest to you that they are future attractions of your future? <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say that they are future attractions of your future. Oh, but in the lobby is not a bad place at all. I was talking to the Lord and he said, Floyd, this COVID virus is a, it's a lobby. I said, God, how so? What do you mean? He says unto me, Floyd, he said, uh, the lobby, I've caused things to shut down and I've caused resources to be shut down to look towards me. In the lobby, there is no distractions. In the lobby, it's a place where your focus is solely on me. In the lobby is where I can construct you, where I can confine you, where I can chisel away the pieces that are not of me. It's in that lobby that you can pick up those things as an entrepreneur. Some of us are entrepreneurs, but because we've been so busy with our daily lives, God had to cause a shutdown. Some of us are songwriters. Some of us are prophets. Some of those are preachers. But because we were so busy with the daily hustle and bustle, God had to shut it down to draw us close in the lobby. Turn your neighbor and say, the lobby is not a bad place. And here's the other thing. I like the lobby. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, how many of us are cooks in here? I hear you, God. Understand, before that a meal can be prepared, there are ingredients. My dobo kobasha. There are ingredients that there must be put to produce the meal. There are utensils. There are cookware. 
But before there can be a finished process, it has to undergo heat. Mandabasha, Globo Kobansi. There has to be a heat. So God, he allows the heat in the lobby. But we, ha- we can't be dehydrated in that place. So he sends condiments. In the lobby, there's condiments. Uh, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Ha! Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not to your own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So in the lobby, we receive instruction. In the lobby, God reveals to, reveals to you the seat. Now the seat can be a destination. The seat can be dreams and visions that he's shown you. But in order to get to that seat, there has to be a finished process. There's got to be a finished work. When you cook, you don't want to ever take something out of the ovens too quickly. It's a danger because you can get food poisoning. Mandasha. So imagine God putting you on display before your time. It can cause a catastrophic t- catastrophe. And we have so many people that came out so premature out of the lobby. So premature. So they have not finished healing. They got hearts that are clogged. So now I'm prophesying and I'm ministering, bleeding on the people. So my contamination is now your contamination. That's when the scripture comes up and says, with clean hands and a pure heart. Turn your name and ask, are your hands clean? So why in your lobby, God will send confirmation of some things when you're in your lobby. Watch this. So whatever is a manifestation down here has to first be an agreement up there. Let me say that one more time. Before there's ever an agreement in the earth, there has to be a manifestation and agreement in heaven. Because heaven has to be a reflection of earth. And earth should be a reflection of heaven. But we got that, mi- got that mixed up. So once, the, once there's an agreement in heaven, then God sends the prophets and he sends the words to confirm. So a lot of times, even before you're in that seat, you're already operating in it. Because heaven has agreed. So then he sends messengers. Watch this. Come here for a second. God, I hear you. Mandasha. Then Pastor Parker. Watch this. Speak it out aloud. I whisper to you, prophet. Speak it out aloud. I whisper to you, prophet. Now watch this. The closer you get to that seat, there's more of a resounding of that. So it's like trumpets. It's like the closer you get to that destination, that place, you hear the word come more more. Teacher, teacher, prophet, prophet, pastor, pastor, entrepreneur, business owner, pastor. So the closer you get to that place, it's a resounding. Now watch this. Now David, while he was in the field, he contended with sheep and he dealt with lions and bears. And in each victory, he was victorious. Which brings me to my second point. Your seat will allow you audience into places you aren't qualified for. Say that one more time. Your seat will allow you audience in places that you are not qualified for. How many times have we gone to work and wonder how we got a promotion? How many times have we gone to look at our house and didn't have the money to put down? But God allowed us to look over that price and get into that house. How many times have we gone with our credit jacked up going to get a car? And God, he allowed us to get a car. And our credit is jacked up. We robbing Peter to pay Paul. Now, this 
spirit of the Lord now has departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, see, an evil spirit from the Lord comes to you. So Saul said to his servants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of Saul's servants answered and said, I have seen the son of Jesse of Bethlehem, who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave warrior and speaks well and fine looking young man and God is pleased with him. So Saul sent for him and every time an evil spirit tormented him, he sent for David. So in a place where God showed him his destiny, he allowed him to be in the company of where he was going. In this place, God allowed him audience to be in the possession of a king. And every time when you think that you're in that place, God will open up those doors, and open up those avenues to have you sit in the company of great men, of great company. Some of you are sitting in seats and positions that you should not be sitting in. But it was by the grace of God and the anointing that's on your life that he allowed you to be sitting in those seats in those places. As, as I look at point three, every enemy has to fall according to the seat you hold in God. Let's go to Samuel, the 17th chapter for a second. We look at David, this shepherd boy. He took food down to his brothers. They were in the midst of a war with the Philistines. And the word of God said that he took, he took down the uh, food to his brothers. And he was wondering what was going on. So he inquired about what was going on. He saw this, what we would call a giant in huge stature. This giant of Gath. The Bible describes him as a large man in proximity and height in cubics and weight. So he went down and said to uh, the brothers, he said, why is everybody afraid of him? Don't they know that we serve God? Don't we know that we serve our religion and Savior ability to take down any giant? We serve our God who has the authority to give us the victory. So the brothers and some of the men begin to hear this. So they went and told Saul. Saul, he then sends for David. Now in this moment, Saul begins to try to reason with David. You're just a boy. This man is a militant man. He will eat you out and spit you out. So he tries to put his armor on Saul. <laughs> How many of you know that every mantle is not for you to wear? God has equipped you with a mantle to serve, a mantle to do warfare in, but that mantle didn't fit David. Turn your neighbor and say, every mantle should not fit you. I'm going to have a transfer moment for a second. So while during COVID, we lost a lot of giants in the kingdom. Remember the Lord came unto me, spoke to me about a year ago that we're going to start losing giants. He said within the next two years, there were going to be giants from last year until this year. And during this time, I began to see giants fall. I said, God, what is happening? And he said to me, I allowed some giants, he said, I allowed some giants in the kingdom to stay as long as they did for the people. He said, but I took them because they were ready. And in this place, while all this is gone, I lost another giant to me. I lost my father. Pastor Floyd Patterson, a, a great man of wisdom and insight. And I said to God, you took something that was great and I lost it. He gave me 
wisdom he imparted, he spoke into my life. But in that moment, he took that so it could push. Sometimes he removes those things out of your place so you can be pushed. So God, God allowed some of the giants to be removed because he needed to get others in place to push. Like it's a danger in not having a Joshua behind a Moses. And I said to God, there are some of these places and churches, they had nobody in place. They had nobody in place. So leaders out there, it's important that you have to have somebody in place to carry the mantle, to carry the church to where it needs to go. And one thing before my father left, he passed the mantle to me. He laid, on, he, he laid hands and released the mantle on me. We need more Elijah and Elijah's in the kingdom. It's a dangerous thing to have your mantle die with you. Because that mantle can be carried to go further and do greater exploits in the kingdom of God. But because of ignorance and pride, we will allow it to die. But watch this. In the lobby, at the same token, the enemy brings about the spirit of fear. So spirit, it keeps us paralyzed. If you ever want to see God, look at nature. So God literally had me look at this nature station about snakes. And I love animals because <laughs> you can learn so much from animals. So a snake, when it's time for it to grow, it has to shed its skin. But watch this. In order to break the skin, it got to rub up against a stick and a stone. And it begins to break and rub until the skin is broken. But there are some of us we are stuck in our skin, but we have outgrown our skin. But because it feels comfortable to us, we stay in it. So it leaves us in the lobby longer because we refuse to move. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. His word says he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed fast on. And he says that Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our pathway. So when the pathway seems dark, he is the light. He gives us instructions. He leads and he guides us. His word says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Back to David. So we look at David. He goes against this militant man. Didn't go with a sword. He didn't go with any armor. He reached into the brook, poured out some stones, put it in a sling, and he used the mantle that God gave him. He released the stones and he slayed the giant. How many know that God has given us the authority to slay giants in our lives? But, but we can't walk in fear. We can't walk in fear. He's given me the Holy Ghost boldness to speak and decree. The Holy Ghost boldness to shift and move. Now, let's move ahead to the 19th chapter. I like this. Now, by this time, Saul has attempted to kill David multiple times. He's tried to kill him, and at this point, David has gone to a place of hiding. How many know that God can hide us in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle? Our God is a present help in a time of storm. We can run and hide in him. So in this time, he's, Saul has sent servants to try to kill But as he goes to try to kill David, each time, he went into the company of prophets. And when they went, they began to prophesy. So Saul went, sent more, they began to prophesy. He sent more, they began to prophesy. Understand the anointing and the mantle of your life. Everything has to come subject to the frequency of God over your life. You can always tell 
what a house carries by the frequency of the pastor. So if you're a prayer warrior, there ought to be prayer in the house. If you are a prophet, there should be some prophets in the house. If you are a church that has worship, there ought to be worship in the house. Whatever is on the leader should be in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, if you're not lined up with the leader, you're not a part of the house. So as I begin to do some studies concerning frequency, there is a healing frequency, 528HZ, which speaks of currents, waves, and radar and sound. There is a frequency for liberating guilt and fear, 396HZ. There's a frequency to returning to spiritual order, 852HZ. Watch this. Now, for personality, the key of C sharp, the frequency is 264. For circulation, C sharp, frequency 586. For thyroid, the key of B natural, 492 is the frequency. For kidney, E natural, the frequency is 330. For liver, A flat, the frequency is 198. For bladder, F sharp, the frequency is 352. For small intestines, C sharp, the frequency is 281.6. For lungs, A natural, 220 is the frequency. For colon, F sharp, the frequency is 176. For gallbladder, E natural, the frequency is 330. For pancreas, C sharp, the frequency is 117.3. For stomach, the frequency is A, 110. For spleen, the frequency is B natural. Frequency is 492. Wow. When you line into the frequency of God, everything has to submit. Everything got to come subject to the frequency that's on your life. Everything. Giants got to fall. You're allowed audience. But watch this. As David went on, it says further, he wanted to become a king. But can I suggest to you, even after you get to your seat, there's another process and lobby you got to go through. So can I suggest to you, it's a seat to the lobby, a lobby to the seat, a seat to the lobby, a lobby to the seat, a seat to the lobby, a lobby to the seat. Even after you seat, you got to move because we move from glory to glory. From glory to glory. And when he shifts, we got to shift. The lobby doesn't have to be a long process. A lot of times we make it a long process. We walk in disobedience. We walk in fear. And they are the things that cripple the body of Christ. They keep us stagnated in a place where we die out. Like committing spiritual suicide. So we abort destinies and purposes. We do a slow assassination on our destinies. Because we refuse to get in place to align. Don't despise the lobby. No matter what you do, don't despise the lobby. You may have heat. You may have some friction and circumstances. But Paul said, I endure hardness as a good soldier. A good soldier. So when the enemy rises up, pull out your artillery. Turn your neighbor and say, what's in your arsenal? If you are defeated so easily, I question your Holy Ghost. You can't tell me sitting in church for 50 years and you have nothing in your arsenal. So you are so easily defeated, so quick to throw your hands up. Go back to the word of God. The word of of God. And not just that. We got to listen. 
we have so many leaders that are operating out of a spirit of disobedience. I have seen apostolic witchcraft. We're operating in a place where I see the gifts on your life. But because it makes me look good, I keep you in that seat. Because I see the notion on, on your life, I don't want to cultivate it, so I keep you in that seat. But you don't realize if that's, if I'm a son and a daughter, then that means that there should be a representation of you. This spirit of jealousy, it's killing us. It's slowly but surely killing us. But the Bible talks about that we are one body, jointly fit. Each person has their particular task and purpose in God. So there's no need to get jealous. Let the hands do what the hands do. Let the feet do what the feet do. Let the mouth do what the mouth do. But we're working together. The Bible says, says, says like this, is Christ divided? Because there is so much division in the body of Christ. That's why there are so many denominations. So many of them. This one believe in sprinkle. This one believe in soaking. But the common denominator should be Christ. If Christ is not the center, I question the Holy Ghost. I question their Holy Ghost. So I say to the people of God, don't despise the lobby. The lobby can be a great place. Out of your pain is birth purpose. Out of your pain is birth your destiny. But God had the lobby to be the buzzards back. Those that's whispering in your ear. Those that desire to kill you slowly. Those that are jealous of the anointing on your life. Those that see plot your demise that pray against you notice I said pray be careful of those that say I'm praying for you because they're praying on you they're not praying for you they're praying on you but in this lobby God is also shifting your surroundings he's changing your connections that's the reason why a lot of us can't move forward into that seat. Because what's around you got to die off. So what's in you can live. My devotion. It's got to die so what's in you can live. But a lot of times we're so stubborn. We're just like Saul. Just like Saul want to compromise with God, keep the spoils of the land. But God said no. I'm going to say this. Don't die in your lobby. Don't die in your lobby. There's purpose in your life. Don't die in your lobby. Follow the instruction that God has given you to get out your lobby. And don't jump ahead too soon. Allow the Kairos moment to take place. The word says that he will exalt you in his time. Not when you get ready or when you want to get there. Because you're here to frustrate the real man. That's how some, some come. We got uh, some of these churches that open and close like a book. Because God never called them for that time and that season. So we step out premature, still sucking on bottles when we should be eating meat. So therefore we can't grow because we're still sucking on the bottle. But he's given us the meat to nurture us, to build us. But we got to yield. 
There's a song that says, have thine own way. Have thine own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Make me and mold me after thine will. Why I am waiting, yielded and still. Understand, Christ has a picture of us. He has a distinct viewpoint of what he sees. He wants to chisel away until what he sees, we see. Let Christ do the work. Not on your own strength. Understand. Through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, I can see God's grace. Through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, I can see God's grace. Through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, I can see God's grace. Through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. Stay right there. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace through the eyes of faith. I can see God's grace through the eyes. I can see God's grace 
this union shall work. Amen. He says, every debris from previous relationships, he brushes us off. He brushes off every wound and hurt, every blemish. I brush it off by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. I decree it right now, fullness and wholeness in the name of the Lord Jesus. For the enemy has a desire for you to quit. He desires for you to run. But there's great purpose and destiny over your life. He's called you to purpose city for a purpose. But the enemy wants to whip, desire to cause you to give it all up. He wants you to run. He wanted you to avoid what God had over your life. But there's a mantle over your life for people. There's a mantle for you to minister to those off the street. They're waiting for you. But God has to heal their heart completely. Wounds from leaders. Scars from leaders. Word curses over you. That you shall fall and not succeed. But God said he wants to heal your heart. Without strings. You can love without hurt and pain and wounds. But love from a free place. Mind over shatabats. Wants to heal you, man. Man, no go by. Shut up, us. A complete healing in the heart. In the name of Jesus. There's a scripture that says that he anoints my head with oil. Now, this is a nugget that, that I began to research. When it was time for the shepherd, he would see flies in the ears. But in order to kill the flies, he had to dump the head of the sheep in the oil. So I speak right now that every fly that's in your ear gate, it be killed. Every spirit that desires to come around you to come your destiny, let it be killed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Walking with God's calls you to do. Evangelist. God will let me turn that loose. Walking what He's called you to do. You guys are a power team. Yeah. The enemy wants to stop you before you get started. Like I literally see people discussing and plotting your demise. In the Spirit of God. I'm praying right now a firewall around you. A wall of fire that nothing shall penetrate. Nothing shall overtake you. Heads of protection around you. That everything that's out to come over the fence gets burned up. I pray a fire anointing around you. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire, Matabasha, fresh fire. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire. But your healing is necessary. It's necessary.
back your cover reading back off the divine forces the desire to come in this ministry you've given strength to this ministry you've given so much strength to this ministry during your time and your prayer and your labor before God I see you enter, interceding and laying before God foolishness too. But God said that he allowed you to see those things so you know what not to do. It comes to preaching the word of God and in ministry. And in some cases you're like, God, what's this going on in your church? But you just sit silently. But he's called you to preach. Declare his word. Stand strong in it. But I see a wind of God overtake you. Like a wave just going to hit you. Another wave of glory. You're going to find yourself sometimes just pausing in worship, lifting your hands. And as you're in worship, God's going to reveal of more of himself to you. If you believe the word of the God, clap your hands. Everybody point towards this man of God. Father, we thank you for what he has poured into this house, God. Now we ask you, God, to strengthen him, God. Cover him. And we declare that no weapon that's formed against him or his family, it will not prosper. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the elevation on his life. We thank you for the promotion on this life here in Jesus' name. And God, we bless you and we give you glory. Even those that don't even believe in this ministry, even those, God, we, we, we know you're, gonna, we, you're going to bring shame even to those that's speaking against his life. In the name of Jesus, God, we say thank you. For what, for what you're going to do through him. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I know we've already given an offering, but we want to sow into Pastor Parker's life. We want to get a seed in our hands and just sow into his life, this man of God. Bless the man of God. Everything in the house is blessed. To those that have cash out, what's your cash out? Dollar sign, Pastor Derek Parker.
all of this would have been in vain if we did not open up the doors of the church. There may be someone that doesn't know Christ. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If there's someone that does not know God in a part of their sins, if there's someone that doesn't have a relationship with Christ that wants to know him in a part of their sins, Jesus is calling. He's calling. He's knocking at the doors of your heart. Won't you come? He's waiting for you with arms wide open. Is there one? God bless you. say this to everybody. I know um, we're still in the COVID season. We don't know how long this is going to last. But um, I do want to say this. Please um, be careful. Um, please make sure you do everything you can to build your immune system up because once flu season comes, it, it, it's, it's, look, it's looking pretty bad. Amen. Um, so, so we ask you, please do what you can um, to build the immune system up so that you can, um, you won't have to deal with the COVID, amen, once it comes. Just be careful, amen. Just really be careful in this season, amen. Um, amen. We just think, again, you can stand to your feet. We're going to depart this place. Thank God for our band, um, Minister Greg. Thank God for you. Amen. Um, amen. Um, we're just grateful. Again, we thank God for um, Bishop Brandon, um, Pastor um, Floyd, who, are, um, who is a total blessing. Amen. Let's look 
lift up our hands as we get ready to dismiss. Repeat after me. I am anointed, equipped, empowered, and more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that today's worship gathering has been a blessing to you. Amen. You can continue to watch this. You can go to our YouTube channel. Amen. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go to Purpose City Church and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on Facebook. Please like and follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. And let's connect together. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing in the earth. And I want to just let you know that we are here for you. We're praying for you. Amen. And, and whatever you need, if you have any prayer requests, or if you want God, to, if, or you want the salvation or whatever, you can text your information in at 443, excuse me, 443-2400-962. Again, that's 443-2400-962. And I'm telling you, and one of our staff will get with you as soon as possible. Again, until next week, thank you for joining us at the Purpose Experience here at Purpose City Church. Love you with the love of Christ. God bless you.